I talk about a lot in my book is what the state of eustress really brings out in gamers. There's lots and lots of science on this, and just to summarize it for you, gaming seems to unleash our natural ability to be more curious, more optimistic, more energized, more joyous, more focused, more determined, yet open to failure, totally okay if we fail. Um, and then I put in parentheses because I think this one's a little bit controversial. This is not as much in the literature, the scientific literature. This is just something I see, so I put in parentheses. Um, to be fully present, um, when we're playing games, we don't ruminate on anything else. We don't have other stories going on in our mind. And there is something about gaming in that way that I think is similar to meditation. Um, a lot of people play games during difficult times in their lives to avoid ruminating on it, um, which can make depression worse or make anxiety worse. Um, and, uh, and just to be fully present to the moment. But of course, games in that sense are distraction. So it's not exactly being fully present to our lives. It's like being fully present to a different life. And that's why I have it in parentheses. It's not exactly mindfulness, but there's something, there's something there, that sense of being fully present to the challenges in front of us. They just happen to be unnecessary challenges, fictional challenges. Um, now, what I think is interesting about this list is how similar it is to the kind of virtues that we associate with trying to become enlightened, of trying to reach that insight, right? Um, so this list here, the curiosity and the brightness, the joy and concentration, the idea of right effort, um, really determined but okay with any results, that sort of equanimity that we aspire to. Um, so we're not, uh, if you think about a good gamer, a good gamer, a good sport, has equanimity whether they win or lose, right? Um, and then of course mindfulness. And I think there's an interesting overlap between these techniques that are supposed to bring you to enlightenment um, and the techniques, the skills that gamers are actually developing. I don't know what this means, I'm just giving it to you as something interesting that I saw. Possibly it means that Super Mario is a Buddhist, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Who wants to take a picture of that slide, because it's really awesome. You guys know you want to tweet it, I'll give you a moment before I go on. Okay, click, click. Click, click. Okay, right. So maybe, maybe that's what we're, uh, maybe that's what we're really saying. Um, I think that gamers and Buddhist practitioners are super empowered, hopeful individuals. They're people who have built and broadened themselves to be open to challenges, to be able to rise to the occasion and participate wholeheartedly in the world around them with all of those traits that we mentioned, the curiosity, the brightness, the determination. And the fact that young people today, if you were born after 1980, the more likely, more, later after 1980 you were born, the more likely this is to be true, um, that these young people have accumulated 10,000 hours of practice at gaming by the age of 21. Um, that's something interesting to think about. Imagine young people accumulating 10,000 hours of Buddhist practice by the age of 21. Um, well, they have 10,000 hours of gaming practice by the age of 21. And it turns out that this kind of practice in gaming does make you better able to go out into the real world and tackle incredible challenges to be a part of social engagement and social impact wholeheartedly um, in, in ways that we're just starting now to see with game design.